Well, hello there, and welcome to this video. My name is Matt Petrowski. I'm glad you've stopped by, and I'm guessing you're here to learn a little bit more about FileMaker. In this video, what we're taking a look at using a globals table, a very important thing to know about in FileMaker Pro. So stick around, and we will be on my desktop in just a few. Alright, so first off, welcome to this video. I'm glad you're here to learn more about FileMaker. Now, I'm shooting this in sequence. It's an episode or a number of series, hence the number on the title. If you're interested in catching these in sequence, if you'd like to start at number one, I've got a couple other series here on YouTube. Click on the channel icon here on the YouTube page and you'll be taken to my channel and you'll be able to see all of the different series if you scroll down the page and you'll be able to start at video number one. Of course, in every lesson, I like to give everybody a little bit of something. So if you came here to learn about global tables, no problem, we'll be learning learning about those. So there is a link that you'll find in the description, most likely, that will have, uh, it's directly to a FileMaker file. I'm using FileMaker 16, and we will be able to follow along, or you will, as we go through this video. Now, I already have my file here loaded. We've got a reference database, which is provided by FileMaker. I'm not going to take the time to, to show how to access that in this particular video. You can look at some of the other videos if you want to access this particular database that I have on screen right here. It is provided by FileMaker. I'm shooting this video in FileMaker 16. It may be in 17, 18, 19. I don't know, maybe some down the, somewhere down the road they may take it out, but it's definitely in 14, 15, 16, I believe. So we're only using this for reference in order to know, you know, what are the features that we might want to put into our own database. I also have another reference database, and these are not database systems that uh, you have access to. You have access to the one from the link that is this file right here, and I do that because I want you to build along with me in these videos so that you learn more about building in FileMaker. It's really the only way to learn. So we can see that here, side by side, as I hide this particular reference database, here's my original. Don't judge it based on its looks. We haven't made it look pretty yet. It's uh, very ugly, but it's basically a database that allows us to filter and, uh, well not filter, but track our times on a project by project basis. And this was created for myself, but what we're doing is we are taking the opportunity to expand this database, build it out such that it, it would be a formal FileMaker solution, something we might, I don't know, sell. All right. So yesterday's video was uh, pretty hectic. Uh, it was a little fast paced. Um, I went through a lot of different things in order to get us to the point where we were talking about this button right here, this load button. Now we haven't even started writing scripts yet. And as I go into layout mode here and double click on this button, this load button is basically using a single step, a single script step, and it's using the go to related record. And as we learned, as I hop into the define or the manage database, and we take a look at our relationship graph, what we did is we started to co-mingle in our graph which is what happens as part of FileMaker development, we started to commingle things that were specific to our data structure and things that were specific to our user interface. So as I stated, these two table occurrences are very specific to the structure of my database. Because I'm saving each timestamp in its own record, I have to have one record relate to another record. And that was covered in the video where we talked about linking records. Now we've added this table occurrence and we did it using a global field right here, this selected project. Now this is what happens in all FileMaker solutions. And that is because FileMaker, I call it the giant ball of wax or a giant bowl of spaghetti. Everything within this graph is not specific just to the structure of your data, but also to how you're going to facilitate how users interact with that data within the actual layouts. Because each layout is tied to a table occurrence, or your layouts are tied to a table occurrence, not each table occurrence. So we created this table occurrence for the purpose of being able to use this global field of the selected project in order to make a selection from a value list that uses an ID, which in turn relates to the project ID, and then we use a go to related. Meaning whatever project is selected 
it's going to go to the related timestamps that have that same project ID associated. So in essence, this is more or less like a filter, this relationship. Well, it turns out that as you develop a FileMaker solution, you inevitably end up adding a lot of these particular types of fields, this, this simple global. And the global is really only serving this purpose. It is this menu right here. It's just so that I can make a selection in the user interface. So when we think about this, we're adding global fields in with the rest of our data fields, and everything sort of starts to get mingled, commingled together, and you start adding more and more fields, and you end up with the database system that has a lot of fields. So there's always been this technique or method where you can isolate globals out into their own dedicated table. Now this is moving you from a very beginner level indefinitely into an intermediate level, and let's take a look at how we do that. Heading into the defined database and going to our tables, following my convention or the way that I tend to name things, um, I didn't used to do this in the past where I would create a table called globals like this, but I am doing this now. I am following my conventions. I, for some reason, it I just didn't apply it to tables. But in my naming conventions throughout my whole system, anything that is all uppercase clearly indicates to me that it is either one, a global field, which is obvious in terms that it's a global, but also an unstored calculated field can be considered a global because it's not actually stored into the database. It's something that's refreshed at the same time. So sometimes I will capitalize those, sometimes I name them with a prefix of unstored globals. So as we click create right here, and we create our globals table, what we're going to do is we're going to take the opportunity to start to pull our globals out from our data tables where they are commingled and put them into a dedicated table and we'll take a look at what the impacts are of this. Now you'll hear something out in the rest of the FileMaker development world and that is it's a recent uh, term that's being applied to this particular strategy which this strategy has existed prior to the term that's being used but it was basically a, refine, uh, a refinement of this particular technique. It's called Selector Connector. It was, it's been heavily promoted by Todd Geist and a few other uh, developers, Jason Young, I believe. And basically what they did is they decided to create a way where you basically connect everything to everything. Now, there's a bit of a downside to that. The graph can become a bit of a mess, and when you connect everything to everything... Everything's connected to everything, and FileMaker always has to evaluate that graph. So your selection list that you can choose from when you're choosing from related fields, if you use a pure selector connector method, and I'm not going to show you that in today's video. We're going super simple. It gets really long and complex. So let's go move our field here in our sample file. We're going to go to the timetable. I do that by double clicking and I'm just going to copy this and go paste it into the globals. Now I'm not going to delete it right away because obviously that would break things and then I would no longer have a functioning uh, database in terms of how it's working. But I copied that with command C. I go over to my globals and I'm now going to paste that in. So I've moved it from my data table into my dedicated globals table. Now we need to wire things up in the user interface um, or start that process. Whenever you're developing in FileMaker, you sort of do things, um, uh, you're always, you're doing data interface scripting, data interface scripting. It's sort of the way that the features evolve. So let's go in and first talk about when you have a global field, can that global field be used on a layout without actually being tied to the table occurrence via a relationship. That's the first thing that we want to uh, address. So as I option drag this, and I select my table here, notice that what we have here is a very key thing in the world of FileMaker. Our current table is always going to be our current context. Our layout is tied to the table occurrence of layout double chevron time. Now this particular table occurrence is connected to two other table occurrences, filter time and layout time. What it is not connected to is time globals projects, hence the fact that it's saying related tables right here and unrelated tables. Now some new FileMaker uh, users don't necessarily know that you can select from a globals table and you can put a field on a layout even though it's not connected within the relationship graph. 
So let's go into, uh, let's zoom out here a little bit. I believe the value list is still associated. Let's take a look and see it is because I took a copy of it. The control is still a pop-up menu and the values are still projects. So what we have right now is we have two global fields. It's important to recognize the distinction. This is a global field that's in the table that is associated, that this particular layout is tied to, or the table occurrence, I should say. This particular global is not, we can always see that by the fact that any field on the layout is prefixed by the double colons, meaning it is coming from another table. But in this particular case, it does not mean that it's actually a related field, because typically when we see these double uh, colons, we think that's a related field that's connected to this uh, table occurrence that this layout is based off of. Not always the case. In this case, it's a completely separate global. Oh wait, we okay. So we go into browse mode and notice that everything works the same. So that's a really big takeaway for this video. You can have a global field on a separate table or from a separate table that's disconnected and still be able to use that on the interface. So in other words, when I make this selection, the ID is still being populated. If you don't know how to see the ID, let's go back and remember our lesson from before, we can take a copy of the field, we can look at the inspector, and we can change the control style to just a regular edit box so we can see what our value list is doing. We can always have a copy of a field to see what's going on. So when I make a selection from this global, even though it's not connected, the what's being stored underneath is an ID value, and that's what we're using as our key in order to establish relationships. So now let's address our our issue because ultimately going into define database we want to get rid of this global field and start to put all of our global fields within this dedicated table it's sort of like we're compartmentalizing things we're going to put our globals in this table we're going to put our data for time in this table and our data for projects in this table so things become segmented out and that type of organization in a much larger solution becomes easier to manage and you get some common things that you can share. For example, selected project. If I'm going to select a project ID, and if I move from one layout to another layout, maybe I want to share that global or that common project across multiple different contexts or multiple different ways that I'm looking at the data. Well, I can do that with a global as long as it's something that I can access. All right, so let's see how we can actually make this available. The first problem that we're going to have is that we are not going to be able to actually do our filter if we're going to take this variable out of this particular context right here or out of this particular table. As soon as we take this out, which our intention is to delete it, we will have broken the relationship. So we need to move our relationship now. Things will still work, it's just that we're shifting things around. So if we select this one right here and we get rid of that relationship and we move our table occurrence over here and we say now we want this to work, selected project to the uh, ID project, actually what I want right there, ID project. What we have now that to some new FileMaker users is a little bit disconcerting because things aren't connected. And we like to work with things that are typically connected in our world. But here's the, here's the trick. They don't have to be connected, but they can be connected. So we're going to see if this will actually work first off, and then we'll see why might we want to connect them, and uh, when might you. And that's when we enter into this world of where selector connector as a a graph approach. There's many different ways to structure things on the graph. And when you hear about these different terms that are used for the graph, it's just a different way that somebody's trying to convey that they think is best in order to work in the graph. So we'll click OK. And let's go see if we can actually, if this will work. Now, first off, in this database, we're going to need some records. Your time zone is different than mine, hence the reason I left it without any records. I'll create a new record. And if you've been following along in the series and not checking in for the first time, you know that both of these buttons do the same thing, just in a different way, because we're learning about FileMaker. So, and I also had somebody that they did this. Um, there was a comment on one of the videos. Let me get rid of this really quickly. They did this. They created a new record and then they immediately clicked closed and they got this funky time right here. That's gonna happen. 
That's going to happen unless you allow some duration of time to happen. So in that case, I probably clicked before a second was even completed, and I'm now dealing with microsecond time, and FileMaker's really having a difficult time calculating that out. So if you, if you click Start, create a new record, click Close, you'll get this funky time if it's less than one second because FileMaker's math likes to work on seconds, although it can work with microsecond time. So let's get rid of that record, and now let's click Close, and we'll get a normal time, because a few seconds have passed. All right, so we did that with Project 9. Now we need some other projects in here. We need to create some other projects. And the way that this database is working is the ID value that's getting assigned to that record is happening based on when I click the new record, it's taking the ID, which is behind the scenes, that ID right there. So let's switch to project eight, and we will click a start right here. And we've got a new start, and we're gonna have some user interface uh, cleanup to do. Definitely, we're gonna make this so that we stay on a given record, and we don't change things around, and new records aren't added. We're doing this in list view so that we can see what's going on. All right, so let's close that one. And why did that one? That one actually was more than a few seconds. Maybe there is a bug and maybe we'll have to find out and solve that. That's what we do in FileMaker. All right, get rid of that and let's see if that close will actually close a valid time again. Mm, that was interesting because more time had elapsed than a second. So maybe we have a bug, definitely something to find out. All right, so right now what we have is we have the load button. It's using the go to related. We should be able to load and only two of them should, ah, this isn't gonna work. Matt, why is it not gonna work? Those of you following along, I already broke the relationship. <laughs> I broke the relationship that this load button was actually using. When I clicked on that relationship and deleted it, I broke it, so of course it's not gonna work. I was going to compare what we had against what we're adding. Well, let's go wire it up. Actually, we don't need to wire it up, we just need to check out load right here. So basically, the only thing that changed was the context in terms of which this load is using its go-to related records. So it's basically, its starting point and ending point changed. So when we look at the defined database, Previously, our starting point was here and our ending point was here, but they are no longer connected together. I have now connected them between a different start and end point. So that's how I always think about relationships. It's just where does it start and where does it end in terms of what I want to get and what does the relationship in between say that I'm allowed to get. So think about it that way. So we need to change the start and the end here by simply double clicking the load clicking the go to related and we're going to modify things. Double click this step and you can see right here that we want to go to the related record but we're gonna have a problem now. This is where we might want, where we're going to have to end up connecting this particular global table to our table occurrence because our context is no longer tied to where the global field is coming from. Now at this stage, you may be thinking, wow, this is a lot of effort. Why don't I just keep the global field in the table and I'll just suffer the consequence? If you have a medium sized or a smaller sized database, I do that. What I'm showing you in these videos are alternative methods and their organizational strategies that help you basically maintain your database. If it's going to be a very large database, keeping all of your globals in a dedicated global table might be helpful. But if you don't feel that it's a cost or a consequence or you don't have a problem with having a lot of global fields in your data tables, truly the fact that you're storing just one little tiny piece of data and you've got globals commingled in your data tables is not that big of a deal. This is more of a preference and a knowledge thing with regards to how you can build a solution out. So because we don't have the ability, we can go to filter time what we want to do, but since our context is this, we can't really make that jump. We, we're not here when we're working on the layout, so we can't jump to here when we're here. It's sort of like we've got, there's no bridge connecting these currently, so we are going to need to wire them up. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to use, um, it's, it's called a cross join. It's um, the true name is a Cartesian product. It's a particular type of re uh, relationship that says basically just give me everything. 
Um, in s mathematics, in set dynamics, I don't know. I'm not a mathematician. Um, it deals with sets, but you know, the easiest thing for me to think about it is the give me everything. So what I did is I dragged pretty much anything here between the two. And when you use this Cartesian type of uh, join, when you say give me everything, in essence, the fields themselves don't entirely matter. In fact, I'd love it if there is somebody out there that is a mathematician that knows about Cartesian joins that has worked with FileMaker. Tell me if there's a reason why it would matter in terms of what fields you select as the predicates. Because if I select this little X, the cross join or the Cartesian product, I only have a selected project in my globals and I could theoretically go against the selected project here if I wanted for it to be the same. But remember, I'm working to get this field out of that particular table. So knowing that there's always going to be a key value that's going to exist, I tend to choose my key values as my fields for selecting Cartesian joins. So in this case, I just need to change in order to get that to become a Cartesian join relationship. And I say OK. So now what we've done is now we've got the connection. So now we're still going to be able to use filter time, but because my current context is here, I'm going to be able to see through the globals field or through the globals table to the filter time. And I'm going to ultimately be able to get that global field out of my layout or my table, which is desired. Now, again, this is a super simple example. And in your tables, in your globals table, you may end up with 50 different globals that you use solution wide. And it's just a nice single place to go in order to have all of those stored. So now let's go see if we can rewire that up. Uh, the relationship should be fine. Um, I do want to go to filter time. I do want to stay on the current layout. I do want to show only my related records. And everything's the same as it is. It should hopefully work now. And we say OK. And let's go see if it works. All right, so let's load project 8. Ah, it did not work. I might have to think about this in terms of what I need to have happen in order to get this to load. There may be something, again, I'm shooting these live, real time. Most everything that I'm teaching here, I do know what I'm doing, but sometimes things aren't going to work and they allow us to think about them. So let's think about this. Somebody probably had a comment in the, uh, in the chat telling me why it isn't going to work. So layout, Cartesian, join, that should, oh. <laughs> Think about this, Matt. <laughs> this is awesome. I love doing this live. Okay. The, the <laughs> this is so common too. This is so fun. I have two selected projects, right? Remember? I have a selected project gl global field right here. And I also have a selected project global field right here. The global that I'm selecting is I'm selecting the global that's in currently in my time field. I didn't select the global that was right here. Do you, do you see what I, this is the field, this is the global that's local to my timetable. This is the global that's local to my globals table. So this is the one that I needed to change because I have no projects where project five exists. This is, this is so key when it comes to working with a smaller subset of data. When you work with values that you know what the results should be, it's much easier than when you have a bunch of data and you're sort of guessing, is it showing what it's supposed to show? I know that I created only two sets of records, one for project eight and one for project nine. So it wasn't so much me and that I probably did something wrong. If I select the right project here and now click load, uh, it still doesn't work. Now we have a problem. So now I'm pretty sure that when I make this selection and that global field should be going to those related records, I should be able to get to them on that relationship. All right, so let's make sure we've got our records. So CBC9, CBC9. So this is a, I have project nine records. Do I have project eight records? DF1D, scroll down. DF1D and DF1D, I do in the project tag. All right, so now we need to figure out what's going on. Why is this not going to load? I should be going, and this is what you have to do whenever you're creating something complex in FileMaker. You have to think about this and say, okay, 
What's selected in this global field is CBC9. I want to go to all of the records that are CBC9. When I click load, I want to go to those related records. Is that actually doing what it's supposed to be doing? And trust me, it gets even more complex once, you, once you're writing your scripts. So I want to go to the related record from filter time. Yes, that's right. I should go to filter time. And is it not going to, it should work as far as I'm aware. I want to show the records using the current, using the related that may be why right there. I may not be able to do this actually when I'm trying to show you here which makes me uh, look like I don't know what I'm doing. But um, I will be able to solve this and figure it out. I just don't know if I'm going to be able to do it live here without boring you with uh, me digging in super deep here in order to get this to work. Because the cool thing about FileMaker is you can typically solve the problem that you're trying to solve. Um, so I'm pretty much guessing that the reason that I'm not able to load those records currently is because of my context, my problem. For this one particular problem, me trying to do this live, I'm probably not going to be able to make it happen primarily because of that one setting on the go to related, which is actually trying to load from this context right here. And because FileMaker, even though this global field is selected right here, the context doesn't make sense for the go to related. Um, the go to related probably wants you know to go right to next to it like it was before, but never fear, there is a way to solve this. We can basically, um, you know, like I said in the previous video, we can uh, either use a uh, find and actually find those records just by actually using the. In fact, that's what we'll probably do, just by the fact that we've made the selection. In fact, it's a good opportunity to, do, to learn an alternative method. Um, but we could do a layout hop as well. So in other words, whenever we're using this go to related, because I'm using a single step on this field, the single step is being used on the context of this particular um, table occurrence. Well, because I moved my global field from this particular table and I moved it into this table, when I click on the button in this context, I can't jump right to this context. So in other words, clicking on the button right here, we can't go through the relationship because this isn't our context. We would have to be on this context. So I ultimately, I guess that's a, a good learning lesson here in terms of uh, dealing with the graph and trying to make something happen the way that we want. Our goal in this video is to get the globals into a globals table and still solve our problem. So let's go ahead and do that. It's really not that big of a deal when you get stuck in this type of scenario. So the load button currently, um, I wasn't planning on making a script, but we're going to do that now. I'm going to make a new script. So open up the scripts, if you will, and click on new, and we will simply make a load script. Now this load script is simply going to do our alternative. And as I mentioned in the previous video, we always have multiple ways to solve things in FileMaker. And when it comes to pulling up a subset of data, we can create a relationship to a particular table occurrence and filter that data out based on the predicates that we use in the relationship. That's just one way where you're using the relationship as a filter for your user interface. The alternate way is to write a script, which we're going to do now, and just go find the data, which is going to be almost just as simple. The code to accomplish something is always going to exist somewhere. You're either going to write a script or you're going to add a table occurrence in a relationship. So that boils down to what do I want to manage more? Do I want to manage more scripts or do I want to manage more table occurrences? And depending on how you like to develop, both of them are equally fine. You're solving the problem. So there's no one way. All right, so let's create this uh, solution. Basically, all we're going to do is um, find matching record, not uh, matching records. We want to perform a find. We're going to type in find, and we are going to choose this option right here of perform find. Now let's talk about these since we're in this scenario. When we get to the scripting session, or the scripting videos, we'll talk about all of your different options. Now, when it comes to a find, you can either tell FileMaker, just do this find directly, or you can tell FileMaker, let's start the process of a find, and then let's just build things as we go. Now, the latter one 
starting the process of a find would be this option right here. Um, FileMaker, I'm going to enter into find mode. I'm going to make this field this, and I'm going to make this field this, and I'm going to make this field that. Then go ahead and execute the find. Or you can just choose perform find. FileMaker, you're going to do this find with this data and with this value. So there's different ways to uh, perform a find, but we're going to perform a find, and we're going to click on this little button, and we're going to choose to specify our find requests. Now in this regard, we're going to specify that we are looking for a particular field. Our context is time, and what we're looking for is the ID project. And so we're going to select that. Now what is the criteria that we're going to use? Well, the criteria can be pretty much anything, but right here I could type an actual value, which wouldn't make sense. Um, like say I want to find uh, uh, these times. This is total uh, pseudocode. Well, right here I can't put an actual literal value. So I need to get a value from somewhere and hopefully it's the ID of the project. Well, this particular dialog does accept the use of variables. So I'm going to put in a dollar sign ID project because that's what I want to actually pass into this find. I want FileMaker to specifically look for this ID project using a variable of ID project. Now, where is this going to come from? Well, it's going to come from our global, of course. So let's add it and let's click OK and click OK. So that's our find. That's really all we need. What we need now is to get our global variable. So let's add a new step of set variable. And I'm going to move that one above. I did that with command control up arrow. You notice that you can move those without actually having to mouse drag them. A nice little thing right there. So let's get our variable. We're going to set dollar sign ID project. And where's the value going to come from? Well, it's going to come from and this is also cool because uh, what this means is uh, using this, we can actually use our globals table disconnected. So let's go ahead and select from our globals table, our selected project. That's where it's going to come from. And we're going to click OK. And we're going to say OK. And we're going to click Save. That's it. Two steps. That's all we need for that particular script. And let's go reassign our button. We go into layout mode. We double click our load. And we now say that we are going to perform a script instead of our single go to related. We're going to select the load script. We're going to say OK. We're going to check that things work. And hopefully, if I'm a halfway decent FileMaker developer, it will work. Project 9, we found two out of the four. Let's switch to Project 8. Let's click load. This should be 30 seconds according to the data that I've collected. And there. Uh, so we've got, we've ended up with our ultimate solution. Let's clean things up and uh, make it uh, look the way that we want it to look. So as I mentioned, because uh, a very important lesson here, um, I thought I knew what I was doing, but again, there's so many things to know in FileMaker. Uh, you come across a situation, you're like, oh yeah, that makes sense now that I think about it. Because I'm on this context, I can't. I would have to be on a global context to directly use a go-to related to go to the filter time. Otherwise, another alternative would have been that I could have written a script that jumped to the global context, which would mean I would be on this layout, I would go to a layout based on this, then use a go to related, which would then filter my time in order to bring up the time, then jump back to this layout. Now that's a long way in order to solve the problem, but it is yet a third way to solve the problem. We could have just left the global in our table and gone directly to the table occurrence and just left it wired up. But we know that our solution is going to grow and we want to put all of our globals into a globals table. That's all right. We'll change. Let's come up with an alternative method. We'll put the global in the global. We know that it can be accessible, as I delete the relationship, on any other uh, particular layout. And we'll just now use a script and we'll just tell FileMaker, go find the records. That's going to be easy enough. Or thirdly, I could have taken the long way around with the relationship intact and go um, hop from here to here, load the records via the relationship, then hop back to here. So there you go. Three different ways to, so, uh, to solve the problem. Now as I go into layout mode, I can actually get rid of this selected project. I'll get rid of this selected project. I'll move this one next to it. 
Everything looks exactly the same as it used to be, but we're going to have one problem. What is it? Hopefully you know. I'll give you a little bit to think about it as we wrap this video up. Because we changed the global field and moved it out of this table, when we click the start, what is our auto enter actually looking up from? Well, it was looking up from the global field that's, that was in the current table, so that's not going to be the case. So if I test this now and I click start, um, I get a project timestamp. Did it take it? Hey, that's, uh, that's pretty useful if it did. I don't know if that's project eight. Yeah, it is project eight. Let's go check our global field, our, our auto enter, and make sure. This is, these are the things that you have to think about. So the auto enter on the project uh, ID is actually coming from selected, ah, uh, see, it would be broken. All I did is, uh, the only thing I did right there is I removed the field from the layout and if you think about this, this is so tricky when you're dealing stuff with FileMaker. I took the field off the layout, but previously I had selected um, uh, project, project 8 was selected. So watch this. This is so key when you're developing with FileMaker to remember what is going on with your database. I'm going to select project, uh, project a different project. Project 8 is DF1D, right? So I'm going to select project seven and I'm going to click a new record. I'm gonna, going to get rid of this record and I'm gonna click start. If I get DF1D, which I did, data's messed up. My auto enter for my project ID is auto entering from the value. So I either needed to delete that, but I have to remember to clean things up if I'm going to move things around. So. That means we go to our ID project and we now reassign this to not coming from, well, that's we don't wanna choose the context from, we want to choose where the data is coming from. We want to make sure that it's getting the selected project from the globals when a new record is created. So remember to clean things up, test them out before you delete, and so now, I don't like seeing all those. I'm gonna uh, omit all of them. So project seven, I click start, three, nine. I know what project eight is. I'll choose project, project eight, click start. There we go, DF1D. All right, so things are working and I can finally do what I ultimately wanted to do, which this was a nice long 37 minutes just in order to get one global field out of a table and move it into another global, uh, another table. I can now successfully say, Goodbye, selected project. I now have what would be considered a clean data table. So in other words, what I have now is a situation where pretty much all of the fields that are in my timetable are currently only related to data. And all of my UI fields that I'm going to use that are globals are now pushed into a globals table. So in essence, what I'm getting as a result of this video is I'm getting more of a clean separation between what fields are used for user interface and what fields are used for just data. And a much larger growing solution Having uh, as clean data tables as possible makes it much easier to manage, especially when you start to interact with external systems, when you're doing a lot of importing and exporting, and it's just yet another technique or method in terms of how you organize your data within the graph. Notice everything does not have to be connected to each other in order to solve the problems that you want to solve. All right, so that was today's video. I hope it wasn't uh, too long or too boring and gave you some more insight into how you can structure things in FileMaker in order to build efficient database systems. Just for grins, let's make sure load my eight, load my nine, make sure everything is still working because you're going to get a copy of this file in the next video, which is next week. So if you need to, you can rewatch this video and actually go through the steps Ultimately, you want to end up with the same type of scenario. You're going to be adding um, a table occurrence or a table, a table occurrence, a relationship. You're going to be moving that, and you're also going to be adding one little script, which we had to add in order to solve our problem of what we learned that we can't go through a relationship in order to use go-to related to just load some records. All right, so let's see if we have any questions for this particular video. As I load those up, all right. So we've got our mornings. 
I humbly guess X match to infinite. So uh, nothing has importance. Um, that's just how I think about it. Not being a mathematician, I don't know anything about the Cartesian set match join products. I just know that in FileMaker, it returns everything. Um, is global tables having a record? You know, in this particular case, it did not. Um, and that's a very good point. That comment that we have right there, um, I wish I could pronounce uh, Sivakumar. Um, that is very, if you're learning FileMaker, there are times, in this particular case, what we've implemented, quite clearly, we don't have to have a record. But there are times when you're going to use a related record, and that may be why it didn't work. Um, it may have worked if I had created the related record. In fact, uh, we should try that. Um, because you know what? It very well might. Um, that may have been what I was missing because I was thinking about all the different things, but I'm glad we learned the lesson. So let's switch over and take a quick look to see what he uh, is talking about in that comment because it's a very key thing. I probably missed it. We need to show our tables and go look at our globals table and open them up. Um, yes, indeed, that is probably the case, and it, prob it might actually work. In fact, this is good follow-up. I'm willing to stay uh, to go longer in order to um, make sure that this works um, or to test that it works because I want you to know this as well. In an earlier video when we were looking at relationships, what happened was the relationship, you couldn't create, a, you couldn't have related records be created when you didn't have a value. So we were working with an unstored field that was empty. And when FileMaker has a relationship that it can't, uh, that relationship isn't satisfied, there's not something on both sides, that something even being if there's a mismatch in the relationship, meaning a false or a no value, it just can't be empty. So in this case, what we did have is we did have an empty relationship. So let's take a look and let's reconnect that here temporarily and see if it'll work. So I'm going to wire up ID to selected project. I'm going to double click and make that a Cartesian join. Exact same thing that we had before that I deleted just before I was going to wrap things up and discuss what's going on and hopefully it'll work here. What we had is we had a relationship where we were relating um, the existence of a global field, which the global value did exist. And remember, globals are stored in memory, but what we didn't have in the globals table is we didn't have a record. So this may be a solution to our problem where you can actually look through these. Um, I don't do it that often, to be honest, um, going through a globals table for the purpose of lookup. I typically do use the find, just because the find is just as fast. It doesn't require the X relationship and um, I don't have to have things connected. Um, but this may work actually as soon as we create a record. So here's the key takeaway on this. There's no records so there in terms of what FileMaker is thinking I can't I have to relate a record to another record but I don't have any records. I can't just relate a value which is stored in memory to that record, I need to have a record. And if you do that and I create a new record, we can now see if it'll actually work. Let's go try that out. It's very easy to test. We'll create a duplicate of our load button. We will disassociate the load button from the script. We will make it do a single step again. And we will set the step to the go to related that we had there before. So excellent comment. Thank you for catching me on that. We want to go to the layout time. We want to go to the current, uh, stay on the current layout. We want to show only related records and match the current record only. So um, actually, and it's uh, filter time is what we want. So let's double check, make sure we always want to check. So this is our destination. This is our starting point. We're now starting here, going through globals, going to filter time. We now know that we have at least one record that the relationship right here will be valid. This will be valid because we have a record here where throughout this video, I obviously was stupid enough to not have that record. So let's see, hopefully it'll work. It should work. That's probably why I was so disconcerted when it wasn't working. I was like, what's going on? Let's see, we should be able to select project eight and load. Yay! Hey, thank you so much, right there. Solution, thank you for actually uh, catching me on that error. 
So I was not confused, as confused as I thought I was. That was the problem right there. So if you are going to use this method with them connected, you have to have that one record. I completely uh, blanked my mind and I uh, forgot about it. And that is our comment right there, uh, the globals table. And Alex even mentioned it too. Thank you so much, guys, for uh, mentioning that out. And uh, that's awesome. Um, so what else do we have? Yes, it should be there for go to related record to work. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, on that and letting helping me to clarify. I get so caught up in uh, discussing things. All right, change your calculation uh, for ID project is connected within global. Why use a var in the perform find and not the global field? You can use the global field. Um, this is a good question. We're gonna uh, go take a look at this question right here because we need to address and know why we do things certain ways in FileMaker. And we are going to uh, open up my scripts. There we go, that's what I want, I wanted to zoom. All right, here we are back at our explanation. Why in this perform find, I think Jean-Pierre asked the question, why did we use this global field when we could actually just add the actual uh, record? In fact, you can, one of the things that you can do is, um, you can, in FileMaker, we haven't gotten to the scripting part, you can perform a find and FileMaker remembers whatever the last find was. And then when you go to create the actual script step of perform find, FileMaker automatically puts in the criteria of the mo re most recent manual find that you just did. Well, in this case, what I don't like about a lot of FileMaker script steps, um, for example, the show custom dialogue is a big one. FileMaker, I tend to call it dialog hell, um, basically because FileMaker, you will find when you're scripting, does not expose its code very well. Lots of things are embedded way down in, in terms of what you're going to look for. So in all honesty, if I was going to do this in a real world FileMaker solution, I should have even been more clear about what I was going to do. So this step right here of perform, find, restore, that's all it says. I don't really know the rest of what's going on in this script because it's not here visible and readable. So rather than directly referencing some field, I like to use variables for the purpose of being clear. And in fact, if I was going to be most clear, I would actually do this. I would probably call this variable search criteria. Because that's going to be very clear in terms of what's happening and the fact that the perform step happens right after that is very clear to me. So if I double click this and I copy this and put this right here of this particular step, put search criteria and click change, that to me becomes much more clear when I'm reading this script. I say set variable search criteria, ah, I'm dealing with something I'm looking for to global's selected project. I'm looking for the selected project. I can therefore infer that perform find is going to actually perform the find of the selected project. So this is just a different way to actually write your scripts. Yes, your script could be more terse and you can whittle this down to just one single step, but your code is obscured. So for me, it's worth the extra effort in order to make my code more visible or more transparent uh, to myself. Good question, by the way. Um, <laughs> hey, what's 37 minutes between friends? Awesome. Uh, yes, context, 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 context. FileMaker and uh, all of these uh, things and how they're connected in the graph, it is just, that is probably, once you get past that one large aspect of FileMaker, FileMaker becomes so much easier to get done what you want to get done. But when you're a new FileMaker learner, the context is just, it can be so confusing. But hopefully, as I describe the problems that we come across, like when we were trying to solve this, like the fact that, I mean, how would anybody expect you guys to know that you have to have a record in a globals table if you're going to take advantage of the structure of being able to move globals out of your data tables into, your, into a dedicated global table? Well, you just wouldn't know. Dialogue, uh, two more boxes uh, than are necessary. Yeah, uh, the, the dialogue box, when we get into the scripting, we'll see uh, how much we've got uh, there in terms of making our code more readable. 
all kinds of stuff coming up in the scripting sessions. But since we don't have any more questions, what we're going to do is we are going to be able to wrap this video up as I switch to subscribe. If you're interested, you can subscribe here on YouTube to be notified. Of course, go to FileMakerMagazine.com, subscribe there too. I send out new information and stuff. The next video in this series will come up right here. For me, this is a Friday, so I hope if it's a weekend for you when you're watching this, I hope you have a good weekend or a good week, whatever. And until next time, happy file making. <laughs>